the destabilization going on in Kenya around Odinga. That's Obama's cousin. This is a guy who has two uh, children. They're Obama's niece and, uh, well, nephew in a broad sense. Uh, and one of them is named Raul, and the other one is named Winnie, after Winnie Mandela, who did the necklacing and political assassinations in South Africa. So this Odinga is essentially a CIA destabilizing operation in Kenya, and he's got a Odinga Islamic alliance to crush the Christians in, in Kenya, but this also reaches into uh, Ethiopia, it reaches into Uganda, Congo, Tanzania, and a whole bunch of other countries in that region. So all of Africa is a battlefield in flames between the U.S. and the Chinese, with Obama leading the charge to kick the Chinese out for geopolitical reasons. Number seven, radically expand federal control over family farms and ranches through the animal ID and premises ID system. Number eight, accelerate the merger of the United States with Canada and Mexico under the Security and Prosperity Partnership. He is also accelerating the transfer of remaining federal authority to unelected quasi-governmental bodies like the World Trade Organization. Number nine, Obama must convincingly play the part of the president and convince the people of the United States that the buck actually stops with him. This is critical to the globalist master plan because in four to eight years, Obama must take the blame, as Bush did, for the New World Order's horrific agenda. At that point, the elite will put a new puppet in the ceremonial seat of power and build him up as the savior, only to tear them down again. And so the process is repeated over and over. For their program to work, it is essential that the people not learn that the presidency is now nothing more than theater. Because if they did, the people would stop looking at the pawns and start looking for the king. Through this system of deceit, the elite's criminal agenda can continue forever because the people waste all of their political energy debating the media spectacle instead of investigating the globalist agenda. Number 10. It's Obama's job to sell the public on globalist policies that aren't in the people's best interest. But the overlords have many salesmen. His most important function is to protect the criminal oligarchs from prosecution while they loot the economy worldwide, start new wars, and engage in torture. They're called Generation O, and they were the key to Barack Obama's White House win. During the campaign, Barack Obama used the Internet like no other candidate before him, harnessing the energy of millions of his supporters. But the question now is, what to do with this young, eager, energetic army? This gives Barack Obama and his administration contact information for so many people. So next time he needs to push his legislation, he can contact all these people. Kennedy-esque. I feel as though this was like when John F. Kennedy was elected. Shouting, smiles, and tears. Obama! Oh this is the best day of my life! It was the scope of Obama's victory that was most impressive. I saw a photograph of Obama playing basketball. And I said, you know what? I see him as a leader. And that's the world that's in his hands. Known a piece of history, commemorating the day the world changed forever. His confident smile and kind eyes are an inspiration to us all. In summation, Barack Obama is a Madison Avenue created fad. All of the crazed Obama worship being pushed by the corporate media is scientifically designed to capture the public in a net of peer pressure mass euphoria. If the New World Order can just distract the public for a few more years, the elite can finish constructing their police state control grid. Now, a lot of times, we don't want to know the issue. Right. We don't want to know the issue. We feel, what do you call this thing where you get this false sense of gratification, but because a black man is in office, everything's going to be all right. No, everything's not going to be all right. Yeah. Until you look into the agenda and what the Democratic Party has been about, is about, and will be about, regardless if Barack Obama is the president or not. And that's real. Barack Obama is the perfect Trojan horse. He makes the people feel like they finally have a place at the table, even as he betrays them. I won't have to worry about paying my mortgage.
Morgan. Oh, it's such a blessing to see you, Mr. President. Thank you for taking time out of your day. Never in my life would think that this would ever happen. Sadly, many Obama supporters can't see what's right in front of their faces because they've already invested their very identity in this artificially created cult movement. Throughout history, it has happened over and over again. People turn their intellect over to cult of personality mass movements, and it's happening again. The evidence presented in this film is documented fact, and those that ignore what history has taught us do so at the peril of us all. As frightening as the information in this film is, there are many things we can do to stop the globalist agenda dead in its tracks. First, we expose the cult of Obama for what it is, a sad hoax. Next, realize that we are all being propagandized 24-7. Investigate all information for yourself, be it political parties, the media, or this film. Be aware of the tricks that the elite use, like the staging of false flag terror attacks and other crises. Rediscover the Constitution and Bill of Rights. Promote a culture of true liberty. There is a reason the internationalists are attempting to destroy the sovereignty of all 50 states. They know it is one of the biggest threats to their domination. The federal government has been completely hijacked by foreign interest and more than 25 states have recognized this fact and are moving to block the New World Order at the state level by declaring their Tenth Amendment powers. But most important of all, there is a huge awakening taking place in the United States and across the world against the globalist agenda. Free people everywhere are joining together and saying no to corruption and tyranny and no to world government. This is the center of endurance, and endurance is what wins wars. Not how many people you kill, but how long can you endure? George Washington lost almost every battle he had, but he endured. He out-endured the British, and that's how the battle was won, endurance. And each and every one of you watching this, every single one of you, is just as important as the people who were our founding fathers, as that you are just as important as the Sons of Liberty who met in the 1770s to, to philosophize about freedom, to philosophize about a republic, to philosophize about a truly free country with a republic. There's a billion people on the planet.